feel free to ask us. Um, I will now pass you over to Alexa Mahone. So, first of all, thanks to Calvert for inviting me and for staging this really historic exhibition. This is the largest exhibition of NSK work in London since 1987, 25 years. It's been this very long and very perverse gap in my, in my research on NSK in 1993. I was completely in the cold. Nobody wanted to know about my life in NSK. It was really a I'm very dead or an untouchable subject for many reasons. So it's really good to see Calvert taking mission with this. So these three groups come together to work on what they call retro guardism, which is based on the idea that you can only work through the traumas and the paradoxes affecting the present day by going back into past traumas, and especially the suppression of the avant garde by the totalitarian movements in Italy and Germany. This is the Yelich Cross. In this image, Mariovich and super Russian supremacism and the Russian avant-garde are very important for NSK. And it's a very important counterweight to the use of Nazi art and socialist realism, both of which are in contradiction with, but also secretly connected to Russia. And they're using it because it's a power symbol. The stag is one of the oldest cultural symbols that we have. It goes back to cave painting. It's always been used by dictators, by uh, kings, by priests, you know, it's, it's very much a power symbolism. Everybody wants to associate themselves with the state. So once you incorporate the state, you're already making a power statement. You've got a very strong choice. Don't behave in the way that an Eastern group would normally behave if they want to get into the West. They're not apologetic, they're not submissive, they don't play by the rules, they do just the opposite. They're very hyper-aggressive, they're very incorrect, they break taboos, they put everything together in completely um, unstable and dynamic situations already in the 90s. They saw NSK as their real citizenship. That's their real identity. You've got your given passport, you've got your British, German, Israeli, whatever. But that's just a pragmatic necessity. Your real state identity, your voluntarily, voluntarily chosen identity is the NSK. It's still relevant, it will be relevant for many years because it contains cultural archetypes, they are very predictive, a lot of the, the meanings of NSK works often don't become apparent from them. What I would say to you is um, afterwards, look closely at the images, actually pay attention to the text. Look at the fact that they use coal on the lot Look at the amount of detail, look at the amount of references in one urban image. The fact that you've got five or six different sets of references often pointing in different directions, that you've got Malievich and a Nazi kind of painting here, and socialist realist reliefs as the frame, all within the same image, all pointing in different directions, and without any final resolution or solution. It's up to you to produce that. He started producing NSK State News on YouTube last year. And it's meant to be a um, bulletin about all NSK. The other initiative that he has is the NSK Reading Room, the Retroguard Reading Room, which is an amazing website full of scans of old interviews, archives, catalogues, uh, really fantastic. Now here we've got an NSK passport for those of you who have seen one before. The problem we're going to have now is biometrics, because this is an old school passport. Once biometric and electronic passports become standard, it doesn't really work. The person who designed the winning poster for the NSK Congress in Berlin, Paul Noir, French NSK fan. And you see how he's following the NSK process and taking totalitarian or military symbolism and just by an interesting American artist called Charles Croft. And he's known for his ceramic art, including ceramic grenades and ceramic collapse. The one next to it, you can see the famous um, accumulator tower designed by Nikola Tesla, which Leibach also used on the back cover of Nature. Probably the most monumental and militant NSK folk art performance to date. And the person responsible is standing below me here. Crouching. Crouching. <laughs> Poised, ready to briefly describe better than I can what you did in Milan and the context. Ah. Well, this is a documentation of the opening ceremony 
of the first Irwin group uh, retrospective in the Middle East. It opened in the 2006. And uh, the opening event was basically uh, uh, faking an official uh, welcoming committee by the State of Israel to the yeah, States of well the Star of David that Abby mentioned, you've also got the Malevich Cross. And this refers to baptism, which was the largest NSK presentation in Ljubljana and Belgrade in 1980. He's been following Leibach since late 80s, as I have, and as many people have. A lot of people were caused at that time. So he's, what he's developing is this kind of um, NSK miniaturized aesthetic using these figures. And it corresponds with something which Christian Masken, who did NSK State News has done, which is NSK Lego. And he's actually made a Lego diorama of a Lego. The ideal image of a totalitarian subject, a woman who's loyal, who's over identified, who's fanatical and who is showing her loyalty to the utopian state. outcome, or the possible utopian outcome, is NSK follow card and the NSK state. Because this allows people to generate their own meanings, it allows people to bypass the art system, it allows for something completely improbable. And the most valuable aspect of all this is the paradox of NSK is that it's simultaneously very European, very Slovene, very Yugoslav, but also for the same reason, very universal and very global. Art that tries to be universal or global generally has no identity, has no character, has no depth. It's the specificity of this that allows for the universal character.